Today's episode is sponsored by Care Of. Care Of is a monthly subscription service that ships high quality personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your doorstep, which I live, laugh, love because they have taken the guesswork out of what supplements I may need. Also, I, I hated foraging up and down the grocery store aisles looking high and low for supplements that typically were out of stock or they just didn't have. Uh, I don't have to worry anymore. I took a short, in depth quiz about my lifestyle and health goals. They sent me a personalized doctor-backed recommendation list, taking all the guesswork out of what supplements were best suited for me, which is a lot because I am a bit of a health nut. I've mentioned a lot about my health over the past few years. So I take a lot of vitamins. Vitamins are very important to me, but some of my favorites are the B complex. It's good for your hair, which I'm trying to grow them inches. It's also good for energy. I also take fish oil. I've talked about my blood pressure and whatnot. So it, it is great for heart health. Fish oil is great for a lot of things, but um, I take it for heart health. And not to mention, they come in a cute and gorgeous packet with my name on it. Each shipment comes with a personalized pamphlet showing you exactly what is in your individual daily pack and why it was recommended specifically for you and your health goals. Also, at any time, you can switch it up. You can remove some vitamins from your pack. Whatever you want to do, they are there for you. And that is why I I love care of. So right now for 50% off your first care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter my code unfazed50. Again, for 50% off your first care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code unfazed50. This week's episode is sponsored by Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. Green Chef makes eating well easy to do with plans to fit every lifestyle. Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals, Green Chef is there offering a range of recipes to suit your preferences. Get everything you need at the Green Market. Their one-stop shop for quick breakfasts, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, and more you can easily add to your weekly order. My favorite thing about Green Chef is how quick and easy the meals are to cook. I do not like spending time in the kitchen if I don't have to. And thank you, Green Chef, because now I don't have to. And y'all know I am on a fitness journey. A lot of their meals are under 750 calories and they are ready in under 25 minutes. So check them out. I highly recommend. This past week, I had their cheesy chicken pesto bowl. It's keto and so delicious. Mmm. I love it. Thank you, Green Chef. I also love the fact that they are both carbon and plastic offset, offsetting 100% of our carbon footprint, as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. So sustainable. They're good for the environment. They're good for you. It's fast. It's easy. Delicious, girls. What are you waiting for? Go to greenchef.com slash unfazed60 and use code unfazed60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Again, go to greenchef.com dot com slash unfazed 60 and use my code unfazed 60 to get 60 percent off plus free shipping green chef the number one meal kit for eating well hey mama girls what the fuck is good what's the tea what's the juice my name is camo and you're listening to another episode of unfazed and unbothered the podcast where we rant rave and ramble about literally any and everything if this is your first time tuning in go ahead and hit subscribe turn on them post bell notifications new episodes drop every thursday and it's free to stream everywhere you get your podcast so there's really no excuse if you're one of my day one girlies sound Sound off in the comments, sound off in the reviews, five star reviews only though, otherwise you're fake as fuck, just say it, just say it, just say it, anyways. I don't really have many life updates for y'all, this past week was the same old, same old, so I'm not going to bore you with the same redundant conversations, but I am in very good spirits, I'm in great spirits actually, um, I've been feeling good mentally. I did actually finish two new songs. One is about to release very, very soon. I'm so excited. I know it's been a long time coming. I've talked about music. I've teased clips here and there. But um, like I've said in the past, I just wanted to make sure that what I put out next is perfect and um, it's taken some time and, and and it's mostly my, well, it's all my fault. It's all my fault. It's, it's all my fault because I just be running off doing this, that, and the third and then I just stress myself out and 
I kind of put my music on the back burner and I'm the only one that's going to get it recorded. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very proud of these two songs that I finished and I'm excited to share them with you. I actually teased another song on TikTok um, and that one is like my favorite song I've written and recorded in a long time. So stay tuned for those updates. Stay tuned for those releases. Um <clears throat> I've also been growing again on TikTok, which uh, I was kind of at a standstill, not even a standstill. I was going downhill. I was going downhill. And really and truly, that's because I kind of stopped posting content and I was just kind of posting my my brand deals. And that wasn't fair to y'all. Y'all signed up for content and um, I've been delivering that for y'all. And I'm very pleased and satisfied with the results. You know, I, I kind of, as a consumer of content myself, I see a lot of people kind of do the same thing again and again and again. And sometimes it gets boring, but um, apparently y'all think otherwise. I kind of stopped with the thrift store commentaries for a while because I'm like, oh, that's so 2020 and 2021 camo. No one wants to see that shit. Apparently I was wrong. Y'all said otherwise. And a lot of new girls are coming in from this content. So if you're one of my new girlies, hello. I love you. Stick around, please. Thank you. So I'm very happy with that. I hit 2 million on TikTok this past week. So that was very exciting. And uh, I've just been living my best life. I have. But, you know, um, totally uh, random. Not random. But it, it Anyways, uh, so on my way to a thrift store that uh, I was going to with my friend, we, we filmed a video at the American Thrift Store. And on our way there, driving past this, it was like a motorcycle facility, I guess. There was a man on the side of the road with a, a walker and he was like in fetal position with his hand on his chest and he was looked like he was having a heart attack in my opinion that that's how that's what I took from it as I was passing by him and I mentioned it to my friend my like, girl should we turn around and she's like girl what if he's a killer I'm like bitch what if no one is stopping nobody is stopping like what if what if I am the the reason this man sees another day so I turn my car all around and um I pull up in this motorcycle place and what's crazy to me is I, I put my hazards on. I pulled in. I wasn't even like really in their parking lot. I was just kind of like in the entrance way, but I was out of the way for any traffic coming in and out, which nobody was. But this man comes up to me as I'm getting out of my car, approaching this man who's on the curb towards the end of their entrance. And he goes, um, do you plan on leaving your car there? And I was like, no, sir, I I'm, I'm about to go help this man who appears to be dying over here. And he's like, you got to move your car. We're about to close. And I said, did you hear what I just fucking said? I'm about to go help this man who's dying. Well, that's fine, but you need to move your car. <laughs> what? What? And then I see this lady. Um, come, this like a, there was also like a bus stop nearby she's like coming over there and she pulls her phone out and she looks concerned but it was so windy I couldn't I, I didn't know if she was calling the police I didn't know what she was so I go up to her I'm like are you calling for help she goes no I'm calling my boyfriend and she's like washing this man on the ground and like doing nothing and I'm it's just so crazy to me how people just don't give a fuck they don't they turn their fucking nose up to people in need they walk past situations that they could easily, you know, help. You could help somebody out. You could go see what's going on. This man is like dying over here and nobody's concerned. Nobody gives a fuck. Where is your humanity, your humility? So I went up to him and I was like, hey, sir, what's going on? What's, what's, what's happening? Are you OK? And he's he was like in hospital uniform he had a hospital wristband on he had a hole in his head like i took video but i'm i don't think it's appropriate to show because he was you know i don't want to kick him while he's low but um he was bleeding out of his head and i'm like what the fuck is going on with you and according to him he told me that the hospital dropped him off at the bus stop he missed the bus and now he was just out there and then he started talking about his like 
woman was gonna be pissed because he spent all the money and he she's gonna say that he spent it on women and then he started saying some racial stuff about Indian people and I was like okay sir um I'm gonna call the police and and send you some help and so that's what I did and I, I was on my merry way but the fact that nobody no, but all those cars passing by, the lady standing there, the man coming to me who saw the man and acknowledged that there was a man there, didn't give a fuck. He was more concerned about the fact that he wanted to close the gates because they were closing and he wanted to get up out of there than the fact that there was a man potentially breathing his last breaths. <clears throat> But that's the world we live in. That's the world we live in. And it's so crazy to me that people are like that. Uh, if y'all see some shit like that, go do something. If, if, if you feel safe enough to do so, don't put yourself in the crossfires of a situation. But fuck. <sighs> mm. Yeah, that's about all I got for this week for you girls. Um, I'm, I'm going to go on a break. But when I come back this past week, I was talking to my best friend about um, we were going down memory lane of our uh, previous employment history. So it inspired uh, today's episode. I'm going to walk you guys through all of my uh, past employment and uh, we're going to just have a fun time. Mm -hmm, yep. So stay tuned. This week's episode is sponsored by Care Of. I love Care Of. Thank you so much. You have made my vitamin routine so easy. Listen, Care Of is a subscription service that ships high-quality, personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your doorstep every month. You take a short, in-depth quiz about your lifestyle and health goals for a personalized recommendation. It really takes the guesswork out of what supplements are best suited for you. I hate foraging for vitamins up and down the aisles of a grocery store. I don't have to do that anymore. Care Of sends me a pack with my my name on it. I plop everything in my hand in one little take. Boom, 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 boom. Everything right there. So convenient, so easy. Also, they are made with plant based compositable film, so you can stress less about your impact on the planet. I love that. We are environmentally friendly here on Unfazed and Unbothered. Okay, so. Listen, right now, we have a special offer for the girls. For 50% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code UNFAZED50. Again, for 50% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code UNFAZED50. This week's episode is sponsored by Green Chef. Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company, girls. They make eating well easy to do and they fit every lifestyle. So whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced meal, Green Chef is there for you, offering a range of recipes to suit your preferences. Their newly expanded menu now offers 30 plus recipes weekly with the option to mix and match meals from every dietary preference in the same box so whether you're vegan one day keto the next they got you covered girls very convenient very easy with many recipes under 750 calories that cook up in less than 25 minutes so if you're not a fan of spending hours in the kitchen prepping cooking you don't have to worry anymore because green chef this past week i had the italian beef stuffed peppers and oh my goodness girls my mouth is watery just thinking about it right now i think i want one right now but actually i ate them all up so i'll just have to order me some more but anyways their recipes feature premium proteins seasonal organic produce and sustainably sourced seafood expand your palate with unique farm fresh ingredients like figs dates and artichokes they're also very sustainable girls green chef is the only meal kit that is both carbon and plastic offset offsetting a hundred percent of our carbon footprint as well as a hundred percent of the plastic in every box very cute and gorgeous and right now girls i've got a deal a steal for you if you go to greenchef.com slash unfazed 60 and use my code unfazed 60 you'll get 60 percent off plus free shipping again go to greenchef.com slash unfazed 60 and use code unfazed 60 for 60 percent off plus free shipping green chef the number one meal kit for eating well 
All right, girls, we're back. Um, I sound a little nasally because I've been sick. I, I probably should have mentioned that in my weekly update. I have been sick. I don't know if it's the seasonal change or what. I usually do get sick around this time when the seasons change. And good old Georgia, the pollen right now is really just fucking me up. It really is. And the hot as fuck one day ice cold the next it's really doing a number on my body i've got a pounding headache right now so um yeah i do sound like a bit of a mouth breather today a little nasally um don't know if you can tell but i sure the fuck can but anyways let's get into the juice camo's employment history so um my very first official job, I worked at the Marathon gas station in Auburn, Georgia. The notorious Marathon in Auburn. The one and only. Right. And uh, so me and one of my good friends, we started working there together. And uh, she went on to work there for a lot longer than I did. But I only lasted two weeks. So... Um, when I started working there, um, at the time I was still getting a government check from being ill. I used to get, um, social security for being sick and I was still in like remission. I was still in recovery. So <clears throat> my check was so fucking tiny. It was not even a fart in the wind. I couldn't do shit with that little check. It was literally 400 fun something fucking dollars. Nothing. But I, I was scared that getting a job, which back then, like, no one, nobody was going to hire me for a, a decent wage. So I, I knew that whatever work I did was going to probably be a, around the same amount of money that that check was. And I didn't want to jeopardize that money. So, um... I tried to find something under the table. And when I went to this gas station, it was like an older woman, mama, as, as they call her. And she loved me. She was like, oh my God, you're so cute. You're so sweet. You're so funny. Beep, beep, bop, bop, boop, boop, boop. I told her my situation. I'm like, hey, ma'am, I just, I'm recovering from a blood disease. I just had a bone marrow transplant. I had chemo and radiation. I'm still getting a government check and I don't want to jeopardize that just yet. So um, if we could, you know, hire me under the table, they owned that gas station. They've always owned that gas station. So she was very, um, down to clown. She was very much up to um, hiring me under those pretenses. So um, fast forward, it comes two weeks, right? And I think her son is like the main owner and he really runs that bitch. But uh, it, it was time to get paid. And I'm like, okay, where's my money? And he's like, oh, you, you got to fill out a W-9 before you can get that. And I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, wait a fucking minute. Mama told me otherwise. So there was like this back and forth for um, like a week of Mama telling me, oh, yeah, we'll pay you cash. And him telling me otherwise, like, that's not how I run my company, blah, 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 beep, beep, blah, blah, boop, 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 boop. He wasn't fucking with me. He never was. And that job was just miserable because I would go in for three hour shifts to do the bitch work. They would have me just scrub the floors, clean the bathrooms and um, stock like the free the, the fridges and freezers and uh, that was actually one of the first times I'd ever taken Adderall. At the time, I, I wasn't aware of how ADHD I was. I just thought I was taking an Adderall because it was cool. It's not cool to do drugs. It's not cool to take Adderall. So I, I do not recommend. I'm not pushing that. I'm not promoting that. But I'm just speaking my truth. Back then, my friend was very ADHD. And she's like, hey, you want one? And I was like, oh, period queen, sure. What's this going to do? Bitch, the, there was one time I was in the fucking fridge for four hours, four hours straight in the freezer thing, whatever. It was so goddamn cold. But because I was geeking and tweaking, I didn't realize how cold it was in there. And I had that fucking freezer looking impeccable, impeccable. And um, 
the guy comes in there and he's like, uh, Camo, I, I don't think you can be in here this long. Nobody's ever been in the freezer this long. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Doesn't it look beautiful? He's like, yes, it looks great. But um, you're you're gonna you're gonna freeze in here. And um, yeah, he was right. I was actually freezing. I was I, I was actually freezing. So when I left, and um, hours later, the Adderall was like now kind of out of my system. My body felt like it was thawing out. I, I I swear on my mother's grave, my body felt like it was thawing out. Like I could feel my blood thawing out. It, <sighs> I don't think my blood actually froze or anything. Obviously, I would I, I probably would have died. I don't know how that works, bitch. How do people in Alaska do it? I don't fucking know, bitch. But I it felt like I was thawing out. It did. It did. Um, didn't do that much uh, many more times after that. Um, he also had us like wear this jacket that was like never washed, and it was like his jacket, his personal jacket, and it was like humongous ass jacket and this man stunk this man stunk like shit he he smelled straight up like chicken shit and uh so his jacket did as well and when we would have to wear it i was i felt like throwing up every time it just wasn't cute i hated the job i hated the place i hated the the, the people there except mama but she she fooled me she lied to me she should have talked some sense into her fucking son because he was not budging with me he was not gonna give me my under the table money so um back then i was down bad i was down bad down 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 bad and uh i remember <clears throat> um i had like no gas I had no money and uh, my my tank was literally on E so I pull up in there and I thought I, I, I was gonna go up, go up in there and like not threaten him but like punk him into giving me my money don't know what the fuck I thought I was doing I was like 20 years old and I go in there I show my ass and I, I'm like motherfucker I can't even drive my car out of this parking lot right now and he's like well if you don't move your car I'm gonna tow it <sighs> he said some choice words I said some things I'm not proud of he called me the gangster faggot um because he knew I rapped and made music uh, I think I think he thought he ate with that comment he really ate me up but I told him he smells like chicken shit straight up told him you smell like fucking chicken shit you fat lard ass bitch and I said some other things I don't uh, I'm not proud of. I wish some bad things on him, and you know, I've, 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 I've asked the universe to forgive me for that, and um, I do um, regret <laughs> those things. But um, I need, I needed my motherfucking money, and it took way too long. Even after I did end up filling out that W nine, it took way too long to get my money, and I was hurt. I was hurt. I was living a, a different life. I was living a different life back then. So, yeah. Um, after that, I didn't have a job for a few months. And then um, I stopped smoking weed. I started having, like, really bad anxiety. And uh, I gave up smoking weed, which was just perfect convenience timing because I hadn't smoked in, like, two months at this time. And um, I applied to work at... Walmart and um, I was hired but there was like I could work as like a stalker or in the deli or something but then they also had pharmacy as some um, a department I could work in and I was like oh my god I would love to work in the pharmacy and I thought I was just such hot shit because they only let selected people work in the pharmacy and they were like you have such a great smile you have such a good presence and you're very welcoming and we only put special people in the pharmacy so I was like bitch I'm special poor, poor, poor. so I got the job in the pharmacy now I wasn't dealing with the medications I was really just checking people out asking their date of birth beep, beep, bop, 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 and um, <clears throat> standing around for nine dollars an hour Oh my fucking God. $9 an hour. My biggest paycheck was $550. $550. And that was me working 40 hours. <sighs> that is insane to think about. 
Yeah. Um, great times in the pharmacy. It, it was. It wasn't. I was on my feet for eight hours straight, five days a week, doing the same redundant shit. But um, I was I was a troublemaker. I've always been a troublemaker. I've had to tame that over the past few years. But back then, I just didn't give a fuck. You couldn't tell me nothing. You couldn't. You couldn't. And I always got into it with people. <clears throat> Not the customers, but like... I had some uh, pharmacy techs in there who would try to push me around and not camo, not fucking camo. They were like, camo, you should do so-and-so beep, beep, bop, bop, boop, 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 because uh, that's how you get a raise. And I said, bitch, I'm doing $9 an hour of work, okay? This is what my job description says. I will not go above and beyond. And they're like, well, that's why you're not getting a raise. No, bitch, I'm not getting a raise because y'all are broke. Y'all aren't broke, actually. I'm broke. But um, y'all are stingy and you don't want to pay me. So um, that's why I'm not getting a raise because I was very friendly with the, the customers. People came back and they're like, oh, my guy, I loved you. You checked me out last time, you know. But um, <clears throat> I was bad. I was bad. All my, You got like, I think, two 15-minute breaks and a lunch break. And my 15s always turned into like 20, 25s. And it got to the point where one of the one of the pharmacists pulled me aside one day and was like, Camo, you're staying gone on your 15s way longer. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Play stupid, girls. Always play stupid. When you're in trouble, when you are in the face of trouble, play stupid. That's what I've always done. Look shocked, look confused, and really just play it off, okay? The thespian in me comes out every time I am in trouble. So, um... Mr. Pharmacist was like, Camo, um, your your breaks are taking longer than 15 and uh, it's, it's, it's becoming an issue. People are complaining. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I, there, I was literally gone for 15 minutes. He goes, mm-mm, see, y- you weren't actually. This motherfucker for many days had printed up timestamps video footage of me leaving the pharmacy at a certain time and coming back 25 minutes later and he's like you see the time stamps and like my thing was is I I wasn't like I was like going somewhere and doing anything I was just moseying around the store stealing things yeah I was I was just shoplifting eating stuff talking on my phone texting my bitches yeah uh uh-huh uh that was another problem my shoplifting back then I was very much a klepto and I've talked about this before I am no longer that girl I don't have to be that girl anymore but back then I was broke I was down bad my cars were shitty I was not I was living with my family I had bills that like my my checks barely covered and I just didn't have money I didn't it was hard it really it was really hard and I'm not I'm not asking for sympathy I'm not asking for pity but again that is the past that's the old camo this is the new camo okay but I was shoplifting quite a bit and um, I would eat all of my meals there for free. And on my lunch break, I would go to Starbucks every day. <laughs> my my logic was I'm not paying for lunch. And like, you know, you have to buy lunch. So since I'm not paying for lunch, I'm going to pay for Starbucks and it'll just balance itself out. Right. That's my lunch money. Starbucks. And I'll just steal my food at Walmart every day, which is exactly what I did. But it eventually caught up to me. It did. It did. Uh, because this old ass man who was like one of like the, the high ups at that Walmart. Um, I was such. My thing is, is like when I was in that world, when I was about that life, my thing was, is it's all about the performance. You know, you, you don't give people a reason to suspect. So I would always be super, I mean, I'm naturally a friendly person, but if like I'm trying to hide something, oh bitch, I'm real fucking friendly. So I would go talk to these people and do things in plain sight so they would never suspect a thing. This is not me teaching y'all how to be a thief, okay? I'm just telling y'all my truth. So please don't come for me and please don't think less of me because we've all done things we regret. I don't regret these things, but I have grown from these things. I do. I do know what's right and what's wrong. And it wasn't I'm not about that life. Okay, I'm not about that life anymore. And I can confidently say I've never stolen from a friend, a family member or a person, period, a small business, only large corporations. Okay, so please don't feel bad for them because they don't feel bad for you. 
<clears throat> anyways so yeah I, I, like i said i would do things in plain sight and this man he i had like chicken a um, rotisserie chicken in my hands and uh i'm talking to him I'm like oh beep, beep, bop, bop, boop, boop, boop. and apparently my slick ass wasn't so slick that day because i thought i had him fooled but apparently he watched me take that rotisserie chicken and he kept eyes on me and i didn't go to the counter to check out so um I kind of fucked myself there. And um, <laughs> days later, there's like an announcement on the like the the speakers across the whole store. It wasn't just like in the pharmacy. It was like, we need camo, government name. We need camo to the manager's office or whatever office it was. And I'm like, y'all hear that? Me? What's going on? And... Uh, <laughs> I get back there and there's a lady who didn't work in our Walmart and she's like, hi, so your name is Camo. Oh, you work in the pharmacy. Wow. That's great. Uh, I couldn't do it. You're doing, you're doing better than I could. I, I know that's got to be a stressful job. I'm sure you deal with a lot, which I did. There were so many nasty old people. I remember one time there was this guy, this woman came in and she had this beautiful um, pink coach bag and matching wallet. And I was like, oh my God, I love your wallet and your bag. And this man behind her dead ass goes, shut the fuck up, faggot. This is, nobody cares about the purse. You're holding up the damn line talking about purses, you little sissy. That woman was so pissed. She said, ally, I'm an ally. She chumped him the fuck out because I couldn't. I couldn't. And then I had to help him. And, and no, nobody back then gave a fuck. People still don't give a fuck. They see this shit and they don't do shit. My, my employers, they didn't say shit. The pharmacist didn't say shit. They just was like, huh. Okay, period. Camo's getting discriminated against, but we don't care. Thank I thank you to the woman with the pink purse. Thank you so much because she lit that man the fuck up. And then I had to check him out. And like I was just so sure. I'm like, name and date of birth. But anyways, I was in the office. Run it back. I was in the office. And she's like, Yeah, you work in the pharmacy, that's great. Beep, beep, boop, 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 boop. And uh, she's like, let me tell me about yourself outside of work. What do you do? I'm like, oh, I, I, I do music. I do photography. I do this. I beep, beep, bop, 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 bop. And she's like, oh, that's great. She seemed so invested in my life story. And um, <clears throat> she's like, well, that's great. So I've learned a lot about you. So now let me introduce myself. My, na my name is beep, beep, bop, 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 bop. And um, I actually work for Asset Protection. Do you know what that is? And at this, this point, the wheels are turning in my brain. I'm like, yeah uh-huh yeah she's like, i watch people go to jail for a living it's so much fun yeah i love my job it's great she's like so with all that being said do you have any idea why you're in here today and i was like no and she's like do you know how many cameras are in this store she's like, there's actually hidden cameras that people aren't aware of there's so many cameras in the store are you aware of that and i was like no she's like, so i'm gonna ask you again do you know why you're in here today and if you're honest with me, we can work with you. But if not, you're going to jail. And I was like, oh. well, um, dead ass. I looked this woman in the face and I said, sometimes I eat for free. Mm. Ah, thank you. She put this piece of paper in front of me she's like i'm gonna need you to write that down right here because we have you on camera beep, beep, bop, 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 bop. and i'm thinking to myself like oh my god they have this whole tab full of all the stuff i've stolen and the, the amount of times i had like this um home girl that i worked with and she was pregnant and she always wanted chocolate and i'm a people pleaser and i wanted to give her chocolate i couldn't afford chocolate so what, what would i do i would go buy not buy i would steal the the big um like trick-or-treat size bags of chocolate and I would bring it back and I would give it to the pharmacists I would give it to my employees I would give it to not my employee what co-workers bitch I'm not Mr. Walmart <sighs> anyways yeah every, everybody was just eating stolen chocolates and I was stealing chargers if I forgot my charger today bitch I was gonna get me a free one so I was so scared when they confronted me about the chicken that they also were going to um 
have this massive tab and they were like yeah so um you're gonna have to pay the like five dollars for that chicken you stole and i'm like for the chicken i stole yeah that's all i stole mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'll pay that gladly. I'll, I'll pay it gladly. And then I lost my job. I did. They paraded me out of the store. Um, it made a spectacle of me. Made me go to the pharmacy and, and tell everybody that I was fired. And it just was a very shameful day for me. It was. It was. And I was so bent out of shape because um, it was hard to find a job back then. It really was. It was. Um Hmm. So um, I'm going to go on a break And when I come back from the break I'm going to continue Because bitch I had a lot of jobs Okay so stay tuned <laughs> Alright she's back This is Camo's employment history continued So after Walmart I was down for a while I could not find a job I was on ZipRecruiter All of those websites I was applying to everything in town Everything out of my town And I I just couldn't find a job So I, I, I took to Craigslist Took to fucking Craigslist I did and um, I found what I thought was a job, but it was really a scam. It was a scam. So I pull up to this facility. It was like in this office space and there was like a garage in the back. Everybody that was there, they were well acquainted. Everyone seemed like family, best friends. There was a basketball goal. There was a hoop in this garage and when I pull up everyone is just shooting hoops shooting hoops ready to start their shift and at first glance I'm like oh this is pretty like lit you know like everyone's just having a grand old time I'm on the clock right now like what is what we do and there's like um I forgot what they advertised the job as but um I was just very confused because I get there and there's you know like I said there's hoops and there's hundreds of these stereos these um yeah these radios there's just hundreds of them in boxes and um basically we had to go sell these stereos yeah so what did they do they would send us off in these vans and you would go to people and we had to like go to gas stations and stop people it was just so it was so intense and it was so awkward. It was I, I I didn't even make it through the first shift. So this guy took me and he's like trying to show me the ropes. These are fucking con artists. Con artists. We stopped at so many gas stations. He'd pull in, act like he was filling his tank up, and then people in passing uh, he would like open the trunk and show like the stereos and he would just approach people who were pumping their gas and he'd be like yo you come check out my stereo beep beep bop, bop, boop, boop, boop. this is uh state of the art it was like a 400 hundred dollar stereo but you know i'm selling them right now i can i can give you them for a hundred bucks you know if you want one it's great blah blah beep, beep, bop. no one was buying it nobody there were, i think there was like one sell he made and he was like yeah that's how you do it that's how you do it and I'm like, really? That's how you do it? And then he tried to, like, put me on to it. And so, like, uh, we pull up into another gas station. And I'm like, I have to do that? I have to do that? <laughs> Can't I just sit here and look pretty? And you do that? I don't want to do that. He's like, well, you got to do this. This is, this is your job now. And I'm like, okay. This is my job. <laughs> so um, I get out of the van. I'm having a, a fucking anxiety attack and I approach somebody and I'm like hey do you like music we got stereos on hell in the back of this van that's so weird uh, it's a great deal you should buy one please <laughs> they weren't fucking with me so um I I, I, I I realized real quick that I was not fit for this job. I just wasn't. It wasn't I, I didn't feel right doing it. It was weird. It was uncomfortable. I'm having to approach people with things they're not even interested in. They're not coming to me. I'm like having to go awkwardly approach people and back then I didn't have any social skills. I was so awkward. I was so like I didn't I didn't know what to do with my hands. I was just uncomfortable always. And so um, 
I'm telling this guy, I think I'm about to throw up. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling really nauseous. Can you just take me back to my car, please? I need to go home. I need to go fucking home, please. I miss my mom. <laughs> and so that's what he did. He took me back to the, to the car. He was very annoyed, but I, I played it off like I was just like, actually getting really sick so i'm like i'm like i'm actually about to throw up please if you don't want me to throw up in this in this van please just take me back so he took me back and i never went back i never called them never they didn't they didn't check for me it was just understood like that was just not the job for me i forgot all about that but the other day when i was talking about my employment history my friend brought that up to me and i was like oh my god bitch how do you re remember that and it just like sparked that memory in my brain and it was just so embarrassing so after that um my friend william he was working at starbucks at the time and i'm i was desperate i was desperate and i've never been somebody to ask for help so i'm like it took everything in me to go to my friend and be like can you please put in the good word for me to work at starbucks and he did he did he graciously did he got me plugged up in there and i started working with him and it was it was fun it was cute and gorgeous i met my friend jay and um it was fun at first it was um but when i was hired it was like right before um college started back up so they were like okay so for the next two weeks you're basically just going to do customer support if you've not worked at starbucks basically customer support it's not what it sounds like i thought that meant just like i was going to be helping customers no that's basically the bitch work like i'm going to be every eight minutes on these timers i'm going to be filling new uh putting new grounds in the coffees i'm gonna be washing the dishes in the back i'm gonna be scrubbing the floors cleaning the bathrooms nothing really to do with the customers um so i did a lot of that every day and they would sometimes put me on the register which was a little overwhelming for me back then because i was so anxious and i had such bad social anxiety and i just i, I, I it, it was a fud okay um the i put some pastries in the ovens loved that um but after weeks of doing the customer support i was like hey manager can you train me on bar like i really want to make coffees and drinks like that's what i want to do and she's like oh yeah you know we'll, we'll train you soon don't worry camo and i'm like it's been like three weeks she told me two weeks but okay whatever queen I'll do, I'll do what i gotta do I'm, I'm desperate for a job now mind you this job this starbucks that i was working at was like a 40 minute drive from my house and i was working four hour shifts and sometimes i would get let like they would send me home after three hours because we got everything done so it really was not worth me like coming to this job really and truly because i was making at that time i was making nine dollars and like 25 cent so um um, like 20 hours a week my paychecks were shit and I was spending so much money on gas back then so um it wasn't cutting it and uh, eventually I was like bitch I need to be trained on bar so she trains me on bar one day I made a few frappuccinos and that was it that was it and so the next like two weeks customer support customer fucking support and finally i turned the fuck up on her i'm like i am tired of doing the bitch work and i'm i'm like, you told me this i'm not on bar at all i'm always doing the bitch work and she's like camo every role in this starbucks is just as important as the other and you are a rock star here at starbucks and your job is vital for the flow bitch i would I wanted to punch her in her fucking throat. I stayed for like a few more weeks, um, but I knew I was on my way out. So I was just stealing hella shit. I was stealing hella pastries. Hella, I was, my friends were coming in. I, they were getting free drinks. I was taking pastries every day and I was um, getting two employee meals a day. And um, I was taking cups, French presses, you name it, bitch. That was my compensation. You want to talk to me like I'm dumb, bitch? Well, here, I'll show you. So I quit. I quit one day. I did. Um, I got into a fight with one of like the, 
the baristas there who was like a shift manager and he was just such a cunt um which funny story about him he was such a little bitch he was such a kiss ass he was like a, a, a teacher's pet but at work like he was just such an ass kisser and like one day he came in and um i had just clocked in like five minutes prior and i guess it was a little too messy for his liking and he tried to like um come for everybody that was back there he was like y'all this is this is why I can't stand working here because y'all are messy. Y'all don't do your job. I should be walking into a clean uh, bar and blah, 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 blah. And there's customers in there. And you're not about to talk to me stupid with an audience. So I'm like, you can keep your comments to yourself. And I'm like, if you're that fucking angry, you can leave. And he's like, I don't know. We exchanged words back and forth. And he's like saying some like smart ass comments to me. And like, I see these customers looking at me like, Ooh, bitch, what you gonna say next and so i i popped the fuck off i said you can fucking leave bitch i'll i don't i'll embarrass the fuck out of you in front of all these customers right now and i had said this that i don't remember everything i said to him but he took his apron off threw it off and walked out i thought that was the end of him and so i was like period no more of that bitch no he gotta keep his job because he was like one of the best ones there and so I just quit. I fucking quit. But what was funny was one of my good friends, he's like a brother to me. He was getting his hair cut across the street at this barber shop. And this guy, Luis, that was his name. He goes in to get his hair cut at the same barber shop while my friend is there. And mind you, I'm in the car. My, I'm in my friend's car waiting for him to get his hair cut. And he notices that, you know, homeboy's wearing the uh, Starbucks uniform. And he's like, oh, you work at Starbucks? You work at the one across the street? He's like, yeah, I do. You know, I work there. And he's like, oh, so you work with Camo? And then Luis just starts talking shit about him. He's like, yeah, I do. Ugh, I can't stand them. Blah, 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 beep, beep, blah, blah, boop, boop, boop. And my friend's like, oh, yeah. Like, at this point now, my friend is, like, trying to set him up to talk shit about me. And at the time, I had, like, just released um, this music video for the dick. If you remember, you remember. If you were there for it, you were there for it. Um, but I had just released this music video. It was, like, a parody. It was, um, it was just silly song. And uh, he's like, yeah, you know, Gamma just released his music video. He goes, oh, yeah, that shit was garbage. Such a joke. Just reading me to filth, right? So my friend is texting me while all this is going on. He's like, oh, you better come in here. You better be, yeah. So I come up in that bitch, and I'll say, hey, Louise. He's like, hey, Camo. Look like he saw a motherfucking ghost, bitch. And I dap up my friend, I'm like, hey, what's up, Junior? He's like, y'all y'all are friends i was like yeah this is my brother mm. that was the last i heard of him or last i saw of him but it was just such a, a beautiful joyous moment for me yeah it was i loved it it was so great um but after that um so after starbucks that didn't work out my brother he put in a good word at his job which I was very surprised that he did because my brother's always been my brother and me actually worked at Walmart together and he was so upset because when I um like I would be leaving work and he'd be coming in or whatever and I would be like walking out with a whole pizza and he'd be like did you pay for them like bitch I'm not paying for this fucking pizza this is my compensation and he'd be like you're gonna get us in trouble so he was pissed when I got fired so um he's he's always like been a good boy always followed the rules always did what's right and we're like night and day so um i was very surprised that he was willing to go out on a limb mind you i also got me and him arrested years prior to that so i was just really blown the fuck away that he was willing to put the good word in for me at his he had a very good job working at renewal by anderson it was a canvassing job basically going door to door selling windows um and so I got a job there and I, I kind of liked that job. It was cute and gorgeous. I, I, I clocked in and like there was like a two hour period where we're just sitting around snacking and talking and chit chatting. And then I'm still on the clock while we're in the car. We're listening to music, listening to podcasts. And then we would get dropped off in these neighborhoods and have to go door to door to door. Now, I was still very awkward. I was still I had such social anxiety. It was hard for me to 
go up to people, especially like I was soliciting basically. So it was hard for me to um, approach these houses, but um, I did. And uh, eventually I kind of got the hang of it. We had like a whole script we had to read. So I felt like I was in theater again. And um, basically back then I would get my, um, like you would, I would go door to door, to door and I would basically get like a, a, a pay, a bonus if I just got somebody to agree to have the consultation. Whether they bought anything or not, I got my money. I got my bonus. So um, I would sometimes get my one, uh, one person interested. And then after that, I checked out. I checked out we had like this little sheet where we had to write every address we went to and write whether somebody came to the door whether somebody answered if they said no if they said yes and if they said yes we had to like fill out all this paperwork but um yeah after I got my like one biter oh bitch the rest of my map I was like no one came to the door no one came to the door they said no they said no they said no and uh I was dating this guy at the time and in this period we were in the Marietta area and he lived not too far. So he would come pick me up while I'm on the clock and we would just go smoke fucking these, um, like a golf course or just, just have a good old grand time. And then he would drop me off like 10 minutes before the van came to pick me up and I'd be approaching one more house and the van comes to me up. Look at Camo working. I'm like, yeah, bitch, I'm working. I'm work. I've been working this whole time, bitch. Poor. I get in the car smelling like weed. They're like, "Why do you smell like weed?" I'm like, "I don't know what you're talking about." That last house I went to, they was blowing it down. It got all over me. I don't know what you're talking about, bitch. Yeah. So um, that didn't last long either because um, I was so in that relationship at the time, and um, that my boyfriend at the time he only had the weekends off so I wanted to also have the weekends off and Monday so um I was adamant about having Saturday and Sunday off and at first they had like given me Saturday off and then they agreed to give me Sunday off if I every Monday I called out I was sick every Monday I was sick every Monday because Sunday night I was at my boyfriend's house and Monday I would go to work with him. He worked at this um, water delivery uh, place where he would deliver the big five gallons of water all through Atlanta. And so we, I would just be in the van with him and we'd just be having a good old time and, you know, just living life. And I wanted to be there for that. I was I was living my, my, my fantasy back then. And so um, he was like, Basically, my my manager was like, if you can work a whole month of not calling out on a Monday, we will give you Sunday off. And I was like, oh, my God, period, period, King. So I worked like a month and a half. And I'm like, hey, so and we actually like uh, like put this in writing and um, I brought it up to his attention. I was like, yeah, so like Sundays, right? And like we had just gotten they just like bought out by some new people like conveniently right then. And he's like, oh, no, actually, um, not only are you not getting your weekends off at all, you're going to have to like my schedule was completely different. I had to work more and it just wasn't giving. So um, I quit. I quit that job. And uh, that was that. Uh, After that, I believe I started working at um, Johnny's Pizza. Yeah, that was my very first serving job and it was that job that I really came out of my shell I really learned how to be social how to approach people but I think that was it was easier there because the people were coming to me opposed to me having to go in a van and approach people about stereos sketchy as fuck or me having to go door to door soliciting windows which renewal great windows incredible windows I'll give it to them but um it was different you know people were coming to me in in need of a service so um at first I was awkward um I got trained and uh then I was just a natural I was so good at it I became so good at serving and I felt like I had really found where I fit in I loved serving tables at first I did um it was fun it was easy fast money and 
I was damn good at it because I, you know, I was in theater and I, I looked at every table as a performance. And so I, I did just that. I performed and, you know, I love being friendly with people. So I'd get to know them. I'd be real personal with people. Um, I would hook them up with shit in the kitchen. I would, I just went above and beyond. I really did more than most of my coworkers. So I was always getting good tips. I had lots of regulars and people just didn't understand what was so special about Cabo. Bitch, I was just good. I was good at my fucking job. And uh, I loved that job. I did. I did at first. And then um, I wasn't making quite enough money. So I started working at Target across the street also. But um, anyway, so I'm working at Johnny's Pizza. And one of the managers there, the kitchen manager, he had like a problem with me and I didn't understand why at first like I thought he was just being silly with me but a lot of my coworkers were coming to me and telling me how he was talking shit and um his little jokes were not actual jokes he was like actually taking jabs at me like he would get like sausages and like shake them and put them in my face like oh you like that don't you camo you like that but it like I don't know like why back then I was like oh he's being funny I was just mad oh hey you're so silly <laughs> and I would laugh and i would be like oh yes I love that but um he was making fun of me so um he wanted to get me out of there because everybody loved camo and nobody liked his fucking ugly ass so um there was one day when all the other managers were not working and um I worked my whole shift and then he pulls me in the back and was like, Camel, I need to talk to you. And I was like, okay, let's talk, bitch. So, um, basically he was like, um, you, did you eat today? And I was like, yeah, I eat every day. Don't you? He's like, did you eat today? Like you clocked in and you ate, right? I was like, yeah. Like I do every day, like everybody else on the, on the works up in this bitch. And apparently that was a problem. So, um, he was like, yeah, well, um, unfortunately for you, you were eating and a table came in that you were supposed to greet. Now I was responsible. So I knew, I saw a table coming in. It was my turn. It was about to be my first table. So I asked my friend, I was like, Hey, can you just go greet that table? I'll be there in less than 30 seconds. I took my last bite of my little calzone took my dishes to the back and I went to my table. They did not sit there for an extended period. They were there. They were greeted. The drinks were already on the table, but apparently that was a problem. So, um, he fired me and I'm like, I come in there. I'm just so confused. Like what the fuck? And even one of the the bartenders like, what, like actively was eating, was actively eating food behind the bar. Right. And, She's like, you can't fire Camo like for eating what? Like I'm literally eating right now. Yeah, this is between me and Camo, so I got fired. Now my friend, who was also my roommate at the time, she was like talking like, oh, you fired? Cam- they fired Camo because they're homophobic. Blah blah beep, beep blah, 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 blah. They fired her just for talking about it. And she came. I saw. I was like getting my stuff, and I see her come in, and she's crying, and I'm like, oh, did they fire you? She's like, yes, they fired me. I was sticking up for you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, bitch. I, I mean, at that point, I was going to leave my tail tugs and just walk out. But my friend was being very noble, sticking up for me. And they fired her, too. Oh, bitch. Mm-mm, that was not a good move for you. It was not a good move for you. So what did I do? I turned the fucking drink station upside down, threw all the fucking drinks, and then I went out into the dining area, clapping my hands. Attention, customers. The kitchen does not wear gloves while they're preparing your food. They're back there digging in their nuts, and they're not washing their hands. They're back there throwing your salad in your bowls with their nut residue. Yeah. How do y'all feel about that? attention customers i went on the patio did it all over again everybody up in that bitch everybody the the employees the uh the customers everyone's like jaws on the fucking floor everyone dropped their silverware everyone's like people are getting up and leaving they're disgusted people are walking out on their tabs people like we need to check we need to check um it was great it was great. It was fucking great. The police got called. Um, I was already out of that bitch before that. But then I, I, I came back 
to get my last check. And I didn't know, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't presented to me that I was banned at the time. So I came to get my last check and they were like, what are you doing in here? Someone call the police. I'm like, give me my fucking money, bitch, and I'll be out of your hair forever. So yeah. Then I committed to working at Target. Um, wait, that's a lie. That's a lie. I'm lying to y'all. I'm forgetting things. I was actually working at Target first. And then I got the job that wasn't paying me much. So I got the job at Johnny's. Oh, what did I do after that? Oh, I got a job at Top Dog Tavern in Bethlehem. Let me go back to Target, though. So Target, when I was working there, that was a pretty good job. I just wasn't getting enough hours. And I was hired seasonally. So, um... I was only supposed to be there for like a month and then towards the end like they were telling us okay so we we hired 60 um seasonal employees and we're only gonna keep three three or four of you and they kept me yes they did bitch because I'm good at what I do poor I was stocking them candles like every aisle that I had to stock and had to um shelf and do everything to, it was impeccable it was so good they were blown the fuck away but also I was stealing hella shit up in there and when I'm, this girl that I went to school with she worked in the customer service and I remember one day seeing her get arrested and they paraded her the same way they did me at Walmart as if I didn't learn my lesson already they paraded her through the store and fired her and she had been there for a long time and come to find out basically she was like um so at Target like a lot of things when you return it it would just get thrown in the compactor and get destroyed and so what would she do she would keep the stuff that people returned and she would go return it to other Targets um, but apparently Target kept tabs on her because she didn't have the receipt. So I'm assuming she had to like put her um, identification in and then they realized that she worked for Target and see these big corporations. The thing is, is y'all need to understand these big places, they keep tabs on you if you're shoplifting and they'll let you shoplift until you reach um, a felony, right? So um, when I saw her get fired for that, I had, I, I was... You know, I was asking questions, right? And I was, like I said, I, I always like to um, play stupid and whatnot. So I was like, oh, my God, like, what happened to her? Like, oh, my God, like, she was such a good person. And one of the managers slipped him and says, yeah, she's a criminal. She's a criminal. She was stealing. And, you know, Target, we're really good. Our asset protection is great. They keep tabs on everybody in here. And I'm like, they do? Really? And she's like, yeah, they do. And uh, I don't think she was aware of what was going on with me. And I don't even know if they caught me because I, I was I was very good at what I did. I was very good at what I did, bitch. I was doing shit where the cameras couldn't see me. And um, yeah, I, was, I started to get scared. I started to get scared because I had taken like so much shit from Target in my shifts. And um, I, I remember there was like this other teacher's pet ass bitch. And she would always like come into the aisles towards the end of my time there. And she'd be like, um... Camel, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm, I'm working. What do you mean? I'm stocking the shelves. She goes, oh, okay, just making sure. So it started to feel suspicious. And then uh, the, our, my last shift, so I was wrong because I was working at both Target and Johnny's. But I was making more money at Johnny's. And I remember at Target, um, they had put me like one day someone had quit and they put me in like the freezer taking shit off like the trucks and putting it in the freezers. And I was not trained to do that, which was fine. I, I I, I learned quick. So um, there was one day where I had overlapping shifts at Johnny's and Target. And um, I called Target the day before. And I was like, hey, so um, I, I just got I just realized that I'm like my shifts are overlapping at these jobs. I'll either need to leave two hours early or have somebody else cover my shift. And they were like, um, you're going to have to find somebody. So I found a girl who was willing to do it and they were, they didn't want her to do it. I was like, oh, so I found so-and-so she's going to cover my shift. They're like, nope, she's not. Mm -mm. You have to do that shift. And I'm like, what? I, I'm, I have another job. And, uh, they were like, well, I'm sorry, you got to make decisions. And, uh, it was like a Friday night. So I knew that I was going to make like what, 20 bucks at Target, 30 bucks at Target um, that I wasn't going to see for two weeks 
versus $150 I could have made and walked out with that night. So I told them that I'm like, if I have, to, if you're going to make me choose between coming in and working for like 30 something dollars that I won't be able to see versus $150 that I'm going to leave with in my pocket, I'm sorry, this will be my last day at Target. And so, well, that's your decision to make. So I didn't show up. I never showed up. Plus I was scared with, you know, all the shit I was stealing. So, um, yeah, my timeline was a little off, but, um, yeah. So then I just, I committed to Johnny's at that point. And then that's when I got fired. I lost that job. And then I started working at Top Dog Tavern in Bethlehem. Yes. Poor. So I worked there. That was the longest job. Every job prior to that, I had not lasted more than six months. Um, and so, uh, top dog i lasted there for a year and a half and i was very proud of myself i'd kind of uh, cleaned my act up i started making better decisions and um i was, was an overall better person and uh, i loved that job i made good money there at the time i had made a lot of friends and uh yeah it was great other than the fact that i lived in a very conservative area so there were people who gave me issues i had several instances where customers would verbally assault me or pick on me or say slurs and whatnot and um it's not like a corporation it's not a it's like a mom and pop type of place so th they didn't really care and they were more um concerned about pleasing the customers than they were protecting their staff and you know not to toot my own horn but like I said at Johnny's I was a damn good server and at that point when I moved to Top Dog I was so good at serving I was so good I could I could juggle multiple tables very well with ease I was able to get my orders in quick get my orders to the table I had accumulated a lot of regulars I had the most reviews the most positive reviews People loved me. People loved me. And um, so I was I, I was very upset with the fact that you had this stellar employee who was bringing in business at the time. I was like, um, I actually met Tasia there. That's when me and her met in person for the first time. And um, I was like, not gr I, w I didn't I really have a presence on social media, but I had a lot of like small town people who really loved me and was rooting for me. And I was like slightly growing on the Internet a little bit. And so I was always posting on social media, come in, come in. People would come in just to see me and just for me to serve them. And I brought them so much business. I, I gave them so much good business. And um I was just upset with the fact that they never stuck up for me. And there were several instances, like one time a customer um, was like, what, what, uh, I brought their food on. They're like, I don't want you bringing out my food. Ooh, I need someone else to, I need, I need to order new food. This, it done touched my food. And all I said was, you can keep your comments to yourself. And he was like, it was always somebody else's table. I was bringing the food out. It wasn't even my table. And I was like, you can keep your comments to yourself. He goes, kiss my ass. And all I said was, I bet you'd like that. And I walked away. So um, my manager, Ashley, at the time, one of her, she was cool. She was the one that hired me. She was like, we're not going to tell, um, we're not going to tell the, the bosses about this. Now, mind you, this place was very, like, misogynistic. They did not let boys serve. So me serving, I was at the first um, male at the time, you know, like, non-binary. Um, but. There wasn't men working there but because I was just so femme and fertile and beautiful. They let me serve and everybody there. They like they wanted the girls to look a certain way um, towards the end. They started hiring some very questionable people. But um, I just I felt like I was the shit back then because like guys would come in all the time and apply and they would get denied. They would either become a bus boy or work in the kitchen. But there were no male or gay or queer or non-binary servers i was the only one so like i had like quite the reputation there and um anyway so my uh, manager was like we're not gonna tell matt another matt um that this happened well like two weeks later why'd they wait all that fucking time they called and complained and matt wanted me fired he wanted me fired for that um but ashley was like no like camo's a great server like camo brings us such 
good business they they do their job really well like we would be stupid to fire them over this like camo didn't say anything out of line like maybe they shouldn't have said i bet you'd like that but she basically saved my job thank you so much queen and uh i kept my job but then like over the next like year and a half there was just so many instances a lot of the time i wouldn't bring it to their attention but there was a certain instances where it was just so bold and so out there like it was like everyone in the restaurant either heard it or like other people were telling the boss like oh this just happened like there was one time i brought again it was always somebody else's table i brought food to um this one table and this guy stands up and he goes what the fuck is that thing just brought my food out i need to speak to the manager i didn't say anything because i didn't want to lose my job i just walked the fuck away embarrassed as shit because everyone in there got silent he was loud as fuck there's children in this place my manager comes out asks him how the food and the service was didn't ask him what happened didn't ask what was going on he didn't give a fuck and uh you know, we had to talk about it, and he's like, uh, I'm glad you didn't say nothing smart to them this time. And I'm like, really? That's That was your concern? Thanks so much. And uh, after that, there was, like, one other instance where I had brought pickles and um, fried green beans. Oh, they were so fucking good. These fried green beans up to this table and this guy was like a fucking jokester. And he's like, um, oh yeah, uh, you're who's bringing my food out here? Uh, I'm gonna need you to go wash your hands and grab the Bible. <laughs> Am I right, y'all? Fuck you, you stupid, ugly bitch. That's why your cock is small. But anyways, um, yeah, he made a spectacle out of me on the patio and I went and told my manager and again, for like the fifth time, what did he do? He goes and asks the customer how the food and the service was. He didn't ask anything about me. And at that point, the my uh, coworkers were very upset because I was not being cared for. I was being disregarded all the time. And so some of like the old head veteran servers, they were like, Matt, this is fucked up. Like you need to say something. You need to say something to these people. And, um, Towards the end, he, like, said he built up the courage and was going to go say something, but they were on their way out. So he didn't do shit at all. And then he pulls me aside, and we have, like, this heartfelt conversation. And he's like, but you know, Camo, I, I hate it for you. I do. But you signed up for this. This is the life you chose. You signed up for this. No, I didn't. I did not sign up for this. So um, that was the final straw for me. So I thought about reaching out to um, like the higher ups. And um, my bar manager, Madison at the time, she was also fed up with that place. Um, they did her wrong so many times. Um, they discriminated against her. She was Asian. And um, when she was pregnant, there was just some shady business that went on. And um, so she very intelligent woman uh, helped me type up with timestamps and situations uh, this very professional email we sent it off to Mr. Top Dog and then they came from South Carolina to have a meeting with me they sat me and Matt the manager down and were like um, they started off basically kind of the same way Walmart did like oh you're doing great here oh yeah I couldn't do what you do but they were like, they really tried to gaslight me. This was the first like recollection I have of being gaslighted. And they were like, you know, Camo, um, every establishment has that star quarterback that the cheerleaders come in for. And it's my understanding that here at Top Dog Tavern, that's you. That's you. You're the star quarterback. You're a rock star here at Top Dog and outside. I see you got a social media presence. People come in here. I see the reviews. You're incredible. And it's those reviews that have kept, that has saved your job here so many times. It is your uh, performance because if you weren't performing above par as you are, we would have let you go a long time ago because it seems like you're causing a disruption here and, uh, after so many instances, we have to ask ourselves, is the good outweighing the bad or is the bad outweighing the good? 
and I was just blown the fuck away. They pulled up this one review I had gotten. It was the only bad review I ever got. And it wasn't even a bad review. Basically, it just was like, um, our server was an, our server, he, she, it, whatever, came with sparkly, glittery nails and took too long to bring my credit card back. Food was great, though. And they tried to, like, use that as leverage to support, like, I don't fucking know. And um, they're like, so I'm really confused why you're coming for Matt's job. It sounds like he's protected you. And I, I wasn't I wasn't made aware of all these instances that were happening. We were disrupting the flow of things. I'm like, oh, I'm disrupting things. You mean the customers? And he's like, what, what do you really expect us to do? Business is business. Um, we can't start like kicking people out we don't want a reputation of kicking guests out that's not good for business and like really just trying to make me feel bad he's like and matt just talks so highly of you speaks so highly of you he says you're one of the best here and you know i had been asking for months to be like um, a server trainer and i was never given that role and i didn't understand why because i thought was so great you know like what was going on i was always closing i was doing all the closing duties and like i was i was one of the best there not a two mile but i was one of the best and um he's like so yeah matt speaks so highly of you i just don't understand why you were coming for his job you want him to lose his job and matt's sitting here we're both looking at each other uncomfortably and he's like i think you owe matt an apology don't you think you owe matt an apology and at that point they had put me in a corner and i'm like oh my god i think i owe this man an apology and i sit there for like 30 seconds and i'm like you know what? No, I'm not going to apologize to this man. I don't care about his fucking job. I don't want him to lose his job. I never was coming for his job. I just want him to do his job correctly. I'm a damn good employee here. The reviews speak for themselves. The people come back again and again and again and again and again asking for camo. The least you can do is protect me while I'm here. So I didn't apologize. I was on thin ice after that. And then... um a few months later, I there was like a guy flirting with me at the bar. He's like, what is the person like you doing in a place like this? And I got to start talking to him. I was opening up to him. And um, he's like, I can only imagine that you go through it here. And I was like, yeah, you know. At that time, I had found another job that I just was like, I was in training for. And I said, yeah, I actually just found another job. So I'm ready to leave this shit place anyways. Like, um, you're right. Like they don't treat me. They don't respect me here. Blah, blah, blah. Beep, 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 boop, boop, boop. And, um, beside him was a couple that was listening into our conversation. And, um, yeah, I got, uh, they called me in one day and was like, Camo, can you come in before your shift? And I was like, oh yeah, sure. Per. Am I about to get a, a raise? Am I about to get a promotion? What's going on? So I come in and, um, basically they were like before you start your shift today like set me up like i was about to really start working he's like we just got to talk about some things and he had pulled up an email that the that the couple that was sitting beside the man who was flirting with me they emailed and basically was like as a business owner myself i would never allow my staff to speak so poorly of their uh place of employment I would fire them on the spot. This is what I heard them say. They referred to this place as a um, shithole or a shit show, whatever I said. And Matt was like, so condescending. He was like, that, that, that's what you said, right? That's what you said. These were Camo's words, right? And at that point, like, I already had another job and like, I knew where this was going. I was on my, la I was on thin ice already for months. And I was like, well, the customer is always right, Matt. <laughs> he's like okay i need you to sign this i said like, i'm not signing that i don't know what that is i'm not signing that he goes okay well you, you're not uh, you're not a, you're not working here anymore yeah we're letting you go and i was so hurt because i worked my ass off for a year and a half there and i was a damn good employee and i went above and beyond and i had so much fun there I, it was such a great environment with my, my friends at least and i just love i really did like that job so i was hurt and um, I got up, I went and hugged all of my ex coworkers, and he's like, you need to leave. Camo, you need to leave. And I'm like, this is not the last you've seen of me, you pigeon nose bitch. And I walked out, I walked out, I did, I did, yeah. And um, 
I did come back one time. I tried to eat in. I had, it was like a year had passed. And, uh, oh, mm, yeah, so I don't, I don't know if y'all all all remember, but I did share that story of how I apparently signed up for this. I I shared that tidbit on TikTok and you girls really showed out for me. This was like the first time I realized that I had influence and I realized that people really cared about me. So to all of you girls who participated in the downfall of Top Dog Tavern in Bethlehem, I love you so much. Y'all are the true American heroes out there. Um, 10 plus thousand people left one star reviews with the funniest fucking shit. People were calling for months, for months, harassing everyone at Top Dog. Um, people uh, were threatening Matt. I didn't encourage that, but I also can't control people. And Matt was just scared shitless. Um, I don't, I, someone told me he either quit or got fired. I don't remember, but um, he was the general manager there for many years. And uh, he was no longer there after that whole fiasco. Um, he was very on edge his last months there because people were calling there and threatening his life, which I don't, um, I would not promote that. I would not want someone to do that, but they did what they did. They did what they felt that they needed to do. And he was scared for his life. He was locking the doors, like in the very back. He wasn't let like protocol changed after that situation. Um, but also like when I worked there, there was one instance where somebody pulled a gun out on me in the back and I came inside and everybody like looked at me sideways, like, are you sure this happened? And we didn't have cameras. Right. And I was crying. I was so like, fucked up I'm like oh my god someone pulled a gun out on me and they're like did someone really pull a gun out on you camo I'm like yes they did they tried to rob me they're like give me your money motherfucker they pulled up in a car and I ran like fucking Forrest Gump I went around the building there wasn't they couldn't like drive there was a comedian there I ran around and I came inside and I was like crying and I was out of breath and I told them what was going on I was very worked up and he was not buying my shit and when I was like adamant about there being cameras in there which was another talking point that they mentioned when I was like when they tried to make me like apologize to him I was like why don't we have cameras why do we not have cameras about you know uh, I someone pulled a gun out on me and they straight up said well I think cameras would do more harm than they would do good they basically implied like they knew some of the staff was not doing what they were supposed to do and there was like shady business going on there (sighs) wow so um yeah so y'all basically canceled the fuck out of them they had to pay people to get the reviews removed and they deleted their facebook for a long time finally brought it back and all the reviews were gone but um it was a great time it was a great fucking time for me then I worked at this um, restaurant, City Lines, for like two months. That didn't work out. I wasn't getting enough hours. They were playing with my money. And it was like a mom and pop. It was the first one ever opened. And like, I was back then hurting. I left this good serving job and I was working this shitty one where I was getting little hours. And um, they also was like, a, they had like a weird pay system. Like basically your tips were going on a um, paycheck and that didn't make any sense to me. And so my paycheck, my first like two paychecks were dog doo doo shit. They were so small. And I was like doing the math in my head. I'm like, um, I know my checks would be way more than this. And so I approached her and she's like, Oh, I think there's actually been like an error in the system. I'm going to look into that. Cause a lot of, it wasn't just me. Like a lot of the staff was like, my check is incorrect. And, um, we had like a mandatory staff meeting one day and I came in and I had already like, I had already put it in my head that I was quitting. I fa- actually found another job after that. I was working at Lazy Dog, went from Top Dog to Lazy Dog, two different dogs. Okay. Um, I came in there and was like, like, all right, have a seat. Came on like, bitch, I'm not here to sit and chit chat. Run me my fucking money. All of you, all of you in here are getting played. You're not getting your fucking money. They're playing with your fucking money. So you need to make sure you're getting what you're supposed to be getting fucking paid. The manager took me aside. She personally wrote me a check for the difference. Funny, right? Um, I got my money. And I left. And I never spoke to them again. Um, then I started working at La- uh, yeah, Lazy Dog. It was another restaurant and it was a great job that was the best job I've ever had I loved that place the food was great I worked there for um, a little over a year 
Um, and, but it was that job that I started growing on TikTok. And at that point, I had like a million something followers. And um, I was making more money online and serving, I'd, at this point, serve tables for a few years. And it just was weighing on me. So I, I, one day, um, my old friend that I went to abandoned houses with convinced me to quit. I did. I went in. I was like, look, I had like greeted my first table and then um, I went to my impl- my uh, boss and was like, hey, um, I can't keep doing this. It's not for me anymore. There's bigger and better out there for me. And uh, yeah, that was July 2020. I quit. And from then to now, I've been self-employed. And I've been very blessed, and um, it's been a ride. There was many moments where I thought I was going to have to go get another job. There's been some, you know, some, some down periods where I was really scraping change again. But I was like, you know what? I made a pact with myself when I quit that job that that would be the last time I worked for the man, and uh, I've stuck to it. And now I'm doing the best I've ever done financially, um, and I'm, I feel very grateful to be here, sharing that long ass episode today um i hope y'all enjoyed it but um yeah lazy dog it was a great great place i loved the staff i loved the managers i loved the food if you've never been i highly recommend it's a california um restaurant everything is made from scratch down to the sauces the food is incredible the campfire pot roast oh my god i love it i'm gonna i want to go get some of that shit soon i need to it was just so good it was so good and they took such good care of their employees um they have this thing called like the king and the queen of the dog pound and basically whoever got a five-star review was the king or the queen until somebody else knocked them off their throne and trust and believe bitch I was always the queen of the dog pound and they would like I loved that job because it was the first time that I felt appreciated they really they used me as an example they were like y'all need to take notes from camo camo is always the queen of the dog pound and like when you were the queen of the dog pound you got free food every day until somebody knocked you off your throne and that was expensive good food there was like really delicious high quality food so I was living for that free food every day and um it was a great job it was it was but serving as a whole was just I was over it so um yeah that was my job history I hope y'all enjoyed I'm dog fucking tired now I want to go to the gym I want to lay down for a minute then go to the gym so that's that's what I'm gonna do but uh I hope y'all enjoyed this episode I uh, hope you could follow along I know it was kind of all over the place this was unscripted I don't have um any like bulletins I just kind of went off my memories so some of my timeline was a little off but uh yeah that's camo's job history And now I'm signing out. Kisses.